Do you want to sell your home for the most money possible and fast? Of course you do. Here are 18 tips that are going to help you do just that. My name is Sincere Gonzalez and I'm a realtor in beautiful Port St. Lucie, Florida. Port St. Lucie is located on the east coast of Florida in the middle of the state. If you're house hunting in this beautiful area, visit my website at www.homesearchpsl.com where you can search for homes like a pro. You can put hearts on the houses that you like and you can either send them to yourself or send them to me so that I can make those appointments for you. All right, so here it is, 18 tips that are going to help you maximize the amount of money that you get from the sale of your home and minimize the amount of time that you spend on the market. Number one is going to be to pay attention to your home's curb appeal. A buyer is going to drive up to your house and start noticing everything right away. So make sure that your driveway is clean, that there's no debris flying around, and that your grass is freshly cut. So while your home is on the market, keep that lawn company on speed dial and make sure that you get weekly cuts, especially in the summertime where the grass grows really fast here in Florida. All right, number two is going to be to pay attention to your front entry. So a buyer is going to spend quite a few minutes in the front entry of your home because that is where the realtors are going to be fiddling with the lockbox and getting the key out to let the buyer into the house. So they're going to be here for a few minutes and they're going to start noticing all of the details outside. So make sure your front entry, you know, you hose it down, you sweep it up, make sure it looks tidy, that there's no spider webs or bagworms or any kind of critters living in your front entry. Number three is going to be for you to pay attention to your front door. You walk in and out of your home every day and you you know after a while you fail to notice the condition of your door pay attention to it and see if it's chipped if it's scuffed maybe you need a fresh coat of paint on your door maybe you need a whole new door maybe some new hardware whatever the situation it is is with your front door make sure that you take care of it before your house hits the market so that you can make the best impression possible on your buyers number four is to spend a few bucks on a brand new welcome mat a brand new welcome mat is going to make the whole front entry look refreshed, presentable, neat and tidy and make the buyer excited about coming into your house and taking a further look. Numbers five, six and seven go all together and that is to create a huge, it creates a huge impact on the buyer when they walk into your house and number five is smells. Number six is the temperature in your home and number seven is the lighting in your home. So let's talk about smells. When you're on the market every morning you should do a smell check. You know, take a breath and make sure that the house doesn't smell like garbage. You know, so take out the trash from the night before. Um, make sure that you deodorize your toilets, you know, every morning. Throw a little bit of deodorizer in the toilets and, you know, give them a flush so that everything smells nice, nice and fresh. Make sure there's no wet laundry lingering around um, that creates an odor. Um, make sure there's no pet smells, you know, cat pee or poo or dog, you know, stuff that is stinky in the house, dirty socks, dirty laundry. Make sure that it's all taken care of on a daily basis before you leave your house if you're gonna have showings that day so that when a buyer walks in, they don't smell anything funky, they just smell pleasant aroma. You know, don't you don't have to go crazy with the aromas because some buyers are allergic to like, you know, intense smells, but you just want the house to be at least neutral and smelling fresh. Number six is the temperature in your house. So we're in Florida and when we're out with a buyer and you've seen five or six homes, it's really hot outside and a buyer is gonna come into your house. If they feel hot, they're gonna feel overwhelmed and they're going to be focused on how quickly they can get out of your house instead of focusing on your house. So while you're on the market, try and make the sacrifice to set your temperature to at least 76 degrees so that when a buyer walks into your house, they feel cool and comfortable and refreshed and ready to continue exploring your home to make sure or to see if this is gonna be the home for them. Number seven is the lighting. There's nothing worse than me as a realtor walking into your house to show off to these buyers and then I have to spend five minutes running around the house like a crazy person, turning on all the light switches and opening the drapes to let all the light into the house. By the time I am done doing this, the buyer has already seen the entire house dark, dreary, and depressing. And it really does not make a good impression on the buyer to have a house show off dark. So if you want top dollar for your house, make sure you make the sacrifice if possible and leave the lights on in all of the rooms, leave the ceiling fans running on low, and 
leave the drapes open whenever possible to let as much light into the house as possible. Research shows that it is a fact that buyers will feel 100% happier in the house if there's a lot of light. Number eight is to pay attention to clutter. So a buyer is going to walk into your house and want to focus on the attributes of your home. If there's a mess on the counter, if the drawers are messy, if the closets are messy, if there's shoes flying around everywhere, um, you know, this doesn't let the buyer focus on your home. They're really focused on the mess. And so it is important to just take everything off the counters and you know, clean up as much as you can, put everything into boxes and out of sight so that the buyer can focus on your house. So deal with clutter, that is number eight. Number nine is to depersonalize your home. When a buyer walks in, they want to envision themselves living in your house and they really have a hard time doing that when there's pictures of your grandma on the wall, pictures of your grandkids. These pictures are very sweet and very dear to us all. But, um, you know, when you're on the market, make the sacrifice and pack them into a box and get them ready for your next house to display in your next house because, um, you know, having a depersonalized home is going to really help the buyer feel at home and start to envision themselves living in your house, which is what you want to do. Number 10 is an obvious one, but it is to keep your house clean. While your house is on the market, make sure that you, you know, check check out the countertops, make sure they're clean, check out the floor, make sure everything is nice and clean. Do it as deep clean as you can before you hit the market. Even scrub your baseboards, make sure the ceiling fans are clean, the glass is clean everywhere. You know that the kitchen is nice and clean. Everything should be as clean as possible to make a good impression on the buyers. Number 11 is to have ambient music in the background when they're showings, if possible. There's some great playlists on YouTube, on Pandora, on Spotify that will play some you know, classical music or spa music really low in the background. And this contributes to a whole feeling that a buyer is gonna get when they walk through your house. There's an agent in town that does all of these things on this list and ambient music is one of those things that he does. And whenever I show one of his listings to my buyers, they always like <gasps> take a gasp and they're like, yeah, this is the one. Something about this house just feels right. And it is all of these things put together that make for that magic feeling that makes a buyer want to make an offer on your home and usually this actually contributes to multiple offers on your home which will drive the price up whenever i show um a listing of, one, of this agent that does this uh all of these things there by the time that we have seen the house there's already multiple offers on the house so it's a really good thing to do Pay attention to ambient music if you can have it in the background. If you need a playlist, I have some on YouTube that I can forward a link to you and you can play this on the background and it's really soothing and you know contributes to the buyer's happiness in your house. So number 12 is so important and this is Mr. and Mrs. Seller for you to not be home during the showings. There is nothing more awkward than me walking into a house to show to my buyers and then Mr. and Mrs. Seller are sitting in the living room. It's very awkward and very uncomfortable. Even when they, you know, when they go outside and try to sit in the patio, it still makes for a very uncomfortable situation because the buyers are not going to feel comfortable opening drawers, opening closets. Sometimes they don't even want to walk into the bedrooms when Mr. and Mrs. Seller are home. So please make the sacrifice while your home while your home is on the market, you know, and your realtor calls you and tells you, "Hey, listen, there's going to be a showing at this time." Pack it up into the car, take your dogs and take your, you know, everything you can. Get in the car and just drive up the street and wait until your realtor will text you or call you and let you know, hey, the showing is done, you can come back home, and then you can continue on with your life. It's a sacrifice for sure, but remember that the time that you spend on the market should only be two, three weeks, maybe a month maximum if you do all of these things properly. So whenever possible you know just don't be home for showings because it makes things very uncomfortable number 13 is for you to pay attention to little maintenance items that you can take care of before you your house hits the market for example there might be little holes on the wall that can be patched 
or there might be broken glass. I've had that happen recently. You know, you can just have a glass company come out and for like a hundred bucks change the glass and then that eyesore won't be there for the buyers to be worried about and be overwhelmed with. There's also things like cleaning out your gutters, um, you know, little things, anything that you can take care of ahead of time that will become a less of an, a burden on the buyer's mind you know handle it go through your house with your realtor and create a little punch list of things that you can take care of if you need vendors in port st lucie like i have a great electrician i can refer a great flooring guy i have a you know great painter just great vendors that can come out and do the work and and lessen the amount of work that a buyer will have to do or at least where you know can be concerned with you want them to focus on all of the good things that your house has to offer Number 14 is staging. So there are parts of the country like California or New York City where you really should spend money on staging. Port St. Lucie is not one of those areas in my opinion, okay? There's a lot of stuff that you already own like, you know, you own couches, you own beds, you own tables, you own plates and napkins and things that you can ask your realtor how you should place these things to make your house look staged and make your house look inviting and uh, like a great space so you know you use the furniture for example in the living room to map out where the buyers should put their furniture or could put their furniture when they start living in their house in your house um you know you want them to say oh that couch fits really nicely there my couch will fit nicely or in the master bedroom this is the biggie oh there's a king size bed in here babe look how much space we're gonna have left over you know so they start to really envision their furniture by seeing how your furniture fits in the space and you can do this all pretty much with everything that you already own just ask your realtor to help you with that number 15 is going to be price and this is really important that you hire a skilled realtor so that they can give you a realistic expectation of what your house can be priced for so most buyers out there are gonna get a mortgage and when you get a mortgage your house is going to have to go through an appraisal and the house is going to have to appraise at a certain value so let's say your house can only appraise for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars you're not doing anybody you're not doing yourself a favor by listing it at 279 because at the end of the day all you're going to get is going to be 250 and there's ways that your realtor can do the research with you and show you exactly I mean not exactly it's hard to be exact on an appraisal but it's you can come very close within a five thousand dollar range of what your house is expected to sell for and it makes no sense to list at a higher price because you know and if the buyer is FHA they're not allowed to pay more money than it than it appraised for it's actually illegal for them to do that and if the house is a conventional um, mortgage then the buyer has to say okay so the house appraised at 250 and this person wants me to buy it for 279 so they want me to pay almost thirty thousand dollars more than the house is actually worth and the conventional buyer has to make that decision and not a whole lot of buyers are willing to pay that much money over what the house is worth so find out with your realtor what they think realistically that the house can appraise for and try to list you know maybe five thousand dollars over whatever that is just so that you have a little bit of wiggle room with the buyers a little bit of negotiation room but listing way over it just doesn't make sense it's not it's going to set you up for disappointment so make sure that the price is right you know hi hire a realtor that's going to do a good job with this for you Number 16 is to make your house easy to show. So when a realtor makes an appointment to come and you know, show your house to buyers, you want to always try to say yes. Remember that it's a sacrifice that you make for two, three weeks, maybe a month that you're gonna be on the market. Always try to make the house available. A lot of homes sit on the market for months and months and months and that is because they're not making it easy for people to see. So what happens is that they're going to make appointments to see 10 other homes and they're not going to see your house because you made it complicated for them to see. So always say yes, make it simple for people to come and see your house, to make an appointment and come and see your house. Um, you know, whenever possible. I know sometimes things happen and you just can't, but whenever possible, try. Number 17 is for you to be prepared to negotiate. When a buyer 
makes an offer on your house, they're entitled to have an inspection. And that inspection is never going to come back perfect. I only had one inspection recently in my entire career of being a realtor that came back 100% perfect and I couldn't I couldn't believe it I'm like are you sure like really um my my inspector said there was nothing wrong with this house everything was great that never happens inspections always come back with situations and you have to be prepared to negotiate because maybe the buyer is going to ask you to fix every item on that inspection and maybe the buyer is going to ask you to fix nothing on the inspection it varies on a case by case situation and it varies depending on the buyer it just you know it really just it, it varies and you have to be prepared to negotiate um number 18 is going to be the most important and that is to make sure that you hire a skilled realtor a full-time realtor that knows what they're doing that is going to give you realistic expectations about what the house can sell for that is going to hold your hand through the entire process that is going to be there for you when things get complicated, that is going to be a problem solver and a peacemaker with all of the parties that are involved because things can get very complicated in real estate transactions. Every now and then we have one that is completely smooth and there are no issues, but for the most part, every transaction comes with situations that have to be handled and you want your realtor to be a nice person and to be a peacemaker and to get along with all of the other parties and of course to get you as much money as possible with as little drama as possible these are my 18 tips that if you put these tips into practice are going to help you get the most money out of the sale of your home and keep you on the market as little time as possible if you're house hunting in Port St. Lucie, visit my website, www.homesearchpsl.com. And if you want to know how much your home is worth in Port St. Lucie, also visit my website, www.homesearchpsl.com, where you can click a link and request a free home evaluation, where I, if you give me 24 hours, I will, you know, run comparables on your house and give you a very realistic price range that your house can successfully sell for and answer any questions that you might have about selling your home in Port St. Lucie. My phone number if you need to reach me is 772-200-9112. My name is Sincere Gonzalez and I hope everybody is going to have a great day. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Share this video with whoever you think might be thinking of selling and um you know where to find me oh and thank you for your comments down below i really appreciate all of the comments and the you know good feedback so you know any questions or anything like that leave it down below have a beautiful day bye